Now you want Echo. Already. There's there's Miss Benita. Good to see her. Nice to see you too. All right. Oh, fancy glasses. I like those. I just ordered new ones. Roxana and I had a conversation about my choice of glasses. Already. <laughs> All right, I think we're live now. Um, so I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Good evening. We're um, having this work session on uh, March 4th. And um, before we get started, I yes, I will acknowledge um, I invited uh, Benita Jamison to join us tonight, uh, our um, superintendent-elect or incoming superintendent, something along those lines, right? Um, and again, just um, even wh while we're being very capably uh, led by Roxana Meacham, um, wanted to kind of take advantage of this opportunity to start to um, draw Benita into conversations a full four months before uh, she takes uh, uh, over as uh, head of the district. So, um, she'll be able to uh, participate um, a little bit more uh, in real time with the conversations. Um, we know that in this Zoom uh, meeting environment, she's been uh, able to follow along um, some of the things that have been happening in the district, but uh, wanted her face to start to be seen and um, again, uh, start to get more familiar with how we operate uh, in our board work sessions and um, board meetings. So um, thanks for joining us this evening, Benita, and um, we will uh, just dive right in then. Um, so uh, can I have a motion on the agenda this evening? Move to approve the agenda as presented. Second. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you, Nikki. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Great. Aye. Um, so our first uh, study item this evening is um, a deeper dive with Itner Architects. Um, we got a kind of overview at the board meeting of some um, tweaks to the, the project um, and wanted to have a chance to um, go a little bit more in depth with that team um, as uh, we're approaching some, some deadlines for the construction um, project moving forward. Um, Roxana, is there any other framing you or the team want to do before um, the Intner team jumps in here? Um, I think that we really just wanted the board to see the full presentation set. The administrators and the teachers from each of the departments and each of the buildings have been working hand in hand with Intner. There have been a, a lot of meetings where we've been ironing out details, and I think they've got really good uh, conceptual models to show you the outcomes of those changes. And so I just wanted you to have an opportunity to see everything that's been happening and ask your questions as well. Great. Uh, Julie, um, you and the team are welcome to take over. All right, we'll get started. Let me share what I've got up here. Oh, can I, can you enable it? There you go, Julie. Sorry, I forgot that. All right. Can you guys see that? Yes. yes we okay. Can. I have, uh, well, first of all, thank you for your time this evening. Um, we can go into as much or as little detail as you would like. I have 97 slides. We have a cash disbursement schedule and a model to spin around. So I'm going to go quickly but please interrupt me if you guys have questions, concerns, things you would like to know more about, uh, please interrupt at any time. So um, we're going to go briefly through the early childhood center, then the elementary, then the middle school and the high school. Uh, we'll talk about construction phasing, particularly at the middle school and high school. We'll look at the cash disbursement schedule and then a bidding schedule. So here's our project process slide, and we are getting really, really close to the end of construction documentation. As you probably all know, we plan to go out to bid at the end of the month. So we've got just a couple of weeks left in our documentation. 
Um, I'm just going to zoom through these because these are the scope review slides that we've been looking at uh, for several months now. So the Early Childhood Center, we had the um, entry and the office renovations, uh, loading dock, uh, site drainage, perimeter fencing, and we'll look at all these in a little more detail here. So these are the four areas that we are addressing as far as site drainage, um, and we have full documentation in our um, civil set on how that's being addressed. And then we also, uh, Mike Wheeland is meeting one of the civil engineers out on Monday to look at site drainage in this area as well. Um, here's our site perimeter fencing. The red is um, the six foot tall metal fencing that the aluminum look metal fencing that matches um, some of the fencing out there on site already. Um, the dark, Blue is a wood look, uh, solid opaque vinyl fence, six foot tall. This chestnut brown color is the color that was selected by uh, the admin and the team. And then we've got a piece of sculptural fencing right here, and then a piece right here. And this is the sculptural fencing, the pattern and um, uh, materials that were selected for that piece by the team. So it's made out of laser cut steel panels with a powder coat finish. And this kind of organic leafy pattern uh, will, was what was selected by the school administration. Um, and then the, the panels will run vertically except at gates where they'll run horizontally. So that'll be a kind of a, a different um, fun piece of fencing at these locations here where the yellow is. Um, the dock lift that goes where the dumpsters currently are to get uh, food deliveries up to the kitchen. And this is not quite what it looks like. It actually will have a uh, complete enclosure, um, a expanded wire mesh safety enclosure around the entire thing. Um, this type and model was selected because it has a capacity that meets the district's needs, but it doesn't require a pit. So we were concerned about, we had safety concerns um, with a pit. So this one doesn't, it's surface mounted. Um, and basically we'll sit behind this wing wall here and then attach up to the landing. The um, admin and entry renovations. So uh, if you all recall, we are providing doors here off of the lobby and then also right here. So visitors coming into the building will be directed straight into the office. They won't be able to access the rest of the school. Um, and then to provide a student entry so that the younger kids um, don't have to deal with these secure doors or go out into the secure vestibule to get into the um, office space, we created this student entry back here. So that's this door here which is currently where the counselor's office is. So the counselor's office then is moving out to the window wall, um, which is this space here. We're able to keep um, some of the casework uh, the, in the workroom, in the existing office, uh, reuse the mailboxes and things like that, reuse the desk that's currently sitting right here, um, reconfigure and then install it back here by this door. So that's that student entry. And then this is the visitor entry. Uh, these are, I look at the finishes for that space. So we're just matching exactly what's in there, the existing carpeting um, in, the, in the new office, uh, existing wall base. We have a little bit of this um, wood look flooring that we will salvage and um, install where needed. There's just a tiny corner of it that we need but it's not made anymore. So we've got that um, documented in the drawings. Um, this wall here will be that bright green color, like the, the wall that the monitor is on now. We'll um, have wiring and everything for to reinstall this monitor on that wall. It will just basically shift straight over here. Um, and then incorporating this gold VCT in back here. And the ceiling also will um, follow the same curved pattern is kind of a new entryway here. We didn't want to deal with 
whatever may be happening above the ceiling when that office was removed to make the ceiling match the exposed ceiling, exposed ductwork out here in this office space. So instead there's a dropped ceiling and then the, the gold, the different colored VCT follows that same pattern. Um, here's the security shutters in the piazza. Um, and we've talked about these before, but I included a little detail here that shows how this is the new column cover. So the existing column, a new column cover with an inset for the structure and the, the frame so that those things really will disappear um, up into the ceiling and, and the tracks will be uh, set into these column covers. So when they're up in place, you essentially will just see a, a very narrow um, strip uh, where, where they'll come down when needed. Um, they include sensors that stop the door from closing if an object is in the way. So the admin's gonna have to get used to not putting the, the lunch tables right under the door, uh, cause that would keep them from going down um, in case they need, in case they were activated during the day. Um, and then there's several, there's a couple of local activation areas in the vicinity. Uh, the hood and motor and everything are completely above the ceiling. So in this case, um, do I have those? Let's see. Nope, I don't have those. But anyway, you, you won't see any of this hood or the motor assembly or anything like that. It will be up enclosed in the ceiling. This, this silver and gray piece here will not be visible in our installation. Um, these are those uh, shades that we've talked about. And we chose a, I believe we chose a silver color um, with the black, light blacking fabric shades. So those will be installed on all of the existing doors. We're replacing um, the existing uh, lock functions, the levers and locks, so that all of the classroom doors will be lockable with a push button from the inside of the classroom. Um, instead of having to go out into the corridor or use a key, um, we're providing uh, rough-ins for additional security cameras and then in additional speakers for improved intercom zoning. That's the ECT, any questions about that? That's our easy one, I'll keep moving. All right, the elementary school, we've got the restroom renovations, the admin renovations, the entry, uh, railings and finishes at the Kiva, uh, the perimeter fencing, mulch field, the new playground, and then security upgrades, very similar to what's happening at the ECC. Um, oh, and changing the address, uh, which has been completed. So the district has, um, I believe until next, until November to roll out that change in address. Um, until the, the county and emergency services won't recognize the old ones anymore. So those have already been established and you can start using them whenever you're ready. Um, there's the uh, owner managed projects, the uh, HVAC replacements, tuck pointing, building envelope improvements, that kind of thing. So we'll start with the site plan at the ECC. Uh, let me zoom in here. So we've got um, new six foot tall aluminum fencing going along this line. We've got a number of gates. Uh, we've done a little bit of work over here with the um, sidewalk. So this piece of sidewalk will be new so that you can get out and then back to the public sidewalk uh, that runs along the site um, without having to go through the uh, parking lot. We've got a gate here and a gate here. We wanted to, we talked with the administration and wanted to be able to capture as much space around the pond um, with the understanding that it's used for curriculum. So that's why the, the gates come out to the property line like this. Um, we've got a gate up here as well, and then a double gate uh, back by the garden. And we're working um, with the landscape architect who's uh, doing some work with the garden grant funds um, for this space, we don't have that incorporated yet, but we are coordinating with her. Uh, but the, the double metal gates back here are so that dirt and things like that can be brought into the garden space and um, uh, equipment rolled in when needed. Um, we've got uh, fencing here and then a new playground. And I've got a couple images of what that will likely look like um, in a minute. 
We've got the eight foot metal gate here with a double gate uh, that can be locked uh, after drop off in the morning. Uh, we've got a gate here, fence, the metal fence and a gate here off of the visitor parking in the circle drive. And then there's already a tall fence along this line. Um, we're gonna replace a couple of areas that, that need some attention, um, but otherwise it, it meets the, the, it matches what, what else we're doing on site. So not much work there. And then we've um, developed along with the school admin, kind of a, a walking or a running track around Mulch Field. So there's still enough um, space within the track uh, for kickball and games like that. But I think it's a, I measured it, I can't remember, maybe like a 10th of a mile around. Um, and so the, the school can work on some signage about, you know, this is distances and, and exercise and things like that. Uh, but it will be an asphalt um, track that circles that field. We will provide sod inside the field. And then in a minute, I've got the civil drawing that shows the um, drainage below, because I know that Wes has asked about that in the past. And then we'll have swings over here and some sensory play equipment, which is um, ADA accessible. Uh, a, a certain amount of playground equipment needs to be ADA accessible. So that's one of the pieces. And then there's a couple pieces over here that will be ADA accessible as well. There we go. So here's the civil plan for that area um, because Wes has asked about that in the past with the, uh, you can see the perforated um, drainage piping that will be underneath the field here. And then it will be slightly sloped to those areas. And then that will attach to this uh, manhole. So should help the situation in the field. And then the, the track is shown here as well. Uh, playground, we are going to reuse your existing um, boulders, move them, but reuse them back here. And then a new play structure here. We'll also reuse the uh, Gaga ball pit. Um, so that's what that may look like. I don't think these are the colors. Nope, here's the colors that the school selected. So this blue, a light yellow, uh, kind of gold, and then a bright green surface. Um, fencing, I think I've touched on that already. So very similar in look to um, what's already on campus. And then moving inside the building. So here's our entry um, renovation. I don't remember if we shared with you all um, where, where we ended up with this, but We've got a wash station right inside the vestibule door. So that'll be great for kids coming in from uh, energy release. They can stop and wash their hands right there before they even come into the building. Um, and then the secure entry into the new reception area here. Uh, that conference uh, room over here and then the restrooms uh, just past that. Um, once inside the office, then we've got workroom, offices. Um, I think the, the admin is going to move some of these people, the labels around, but basically these are all offices, uh, two classrooms here off of the library corridor, and then the new nurses room um, with an isolation room for uh, students who are um, contagious, and then two other cot locations out in the exam area. A uh, new faculty lounge reusing the existing casework and kitchenette setup along this um, south wall. This sink, this is the sink that we'll put in the lobby. So it's a little upgraded, um, a nice, nice looking uh, clean wash station there in the lobby. Um, so that pieces being built out into that two-story atrium, as you know. And so we've um, spent some time thinking about what the cap of that is. Uh, so this is sloped slightly so that if students throw things up there, they shouldn't 
collect up there. And then we're replacing the lighting in the lobby with these kind of random hung um, globes. So doing something, the, the lobby now is very linear, very rec uh, rectilinear and symmetrical. And so this will substantially kind of change the, the feel of the lobby um, without really changing the finishes. So we are matching, basically matching back in the finishes. Let me see here, there we go. Uh, so those stripes that are in the corridor will continue out um, into the new vestibule and lobby area. Uh, we've got a walk-off carpet in here, um, office carpet in here, and then the white VCT through here. So we'll follow kind of these angles that have been created with um, the, the corner of this reception area. Let's go back a couple. Um, upstairs then, we are changing the nurse's office into a conference room with a new door here. And then the rest of the uh, student services suite will be a classroom and then two offices off of the corridor. So that's 3D here. Um, just the furniture in all of these is not set yet. Uh, we've just started furniture conversations. So basically we're showing it more for um, scale and so that we can start those discussions. Um, it's not necessarily the furniture that is going to be in the space. Uh, we've also got then off of here, off of the conference room, a restroom and a quiet room that can be used as a mother's room as well. Uh, so the restroom renovations, these are your existing restrooms. Uh, the existing finishes, which will match. Um, and then one of the, the proposed restroom layouts. So we're opening up these walls, um, getting rid of the urinals. So there will be stalls throughout, five on each side. And then there will be a three person uh, wash station right here. And then a two person out here. Um, we found when we went through this process that you don't meet plumbing codes in any way. So we couldn't make the situation worse. Um, and so we needed to provide at least as many sinks as you currently have. Um, but also it, it seems like a great idea to just, any place we can get wash stations in these days is a, a good idea. So um, being able to spread the kids out, have a couple in the hall and then a couple um, in the vestibule going into the restrooms. Um, new uh, water fountains. Uh, and we are providing the minimal number of water fountains and more um, bottle fillers whenever we can. So that's our strategy there. And then this is the type of enclosures that we'll have on the restroom stalls. So as you can see, they're really tall. Um, what you can't see is that the, like the, the cracks between them are very small. So um, you don't have to worry about the uh, sight lines that are in some other restroom stalls. Um, the ADA stalls need to have nine inches at the bottom, but the rest will be six. So there'll be a very minimal gap at the bottom and then they'll be six feet tall. So quite a bit taller than standard restroom stalls. Um, these are the finishes for the office suite. So bringing in some blue and some gold, um, maple matching a lot of the existing casework. Uh, the new desk will have a solid surface uh, transaction top, and then the work surface uh, will be a similar lighter color, also a solid surface. These are the restroom finishes, so we're matching your existing tile. Um, we do have to kind of mediate a uh, difference in height as we go around the corner. Now that it's open, there's no door. Um, so we're doing like a pattern in the blue tiles that go up and down to match up the different heights um, as you enter into the bathroom. Our, our goal with the restroom finishes was to not replace it if we didn't have to. So we didn't wanna retile the entire space. Um, and this tile is pretty prominent throughout the building. So keeping it wherever possible, um, office carpeting and admin carpeting. There's those uh, floor plans again. And then a look at that new reception space um, with the uh, receptionist desk and then the uh, um, 
sorry, attendance, the attendance person is the other desk. So two desks and then an opening to the office beyond. Uh, we'll provide connections for a for digital signage here and some seating. Workroom, um, big deal in here was the mailboxes. So all the mailboxes will be on this wall, some storage, uh, space for their laminators, copier, things like that. Use of that casework. Uh, finishes for the nurses area. We have kind of some fun curtains in there. Lots of storage. Um, and then the kiva. We are going to do an epoxy, a poured flooring in the kiva. So it's going to be very durable. It's not going anywhere. You're not going to have to replace it ever. Um, so this is the uh, color and pattern for that epoxy flooring. It will follow the line of the steps. Um, and then we'll provide some custom cushions and some oh. fun accent colors uh, for sitting in that area. And then uh, these uh, kind of serve two purposes. One is fall protection. Uh, and the other is that kind of a leaning space for kids. So that in addition to sitting here um, inside of the Kiva, you can have uh, kids leaning up against here. Uh, you can have staff and admin bring um, laptops, technology, um, put it on this counter. Uh, it is narrow enough that we hope, and it's also supported. So if someone does decide to sit on it, it will be fine, but it's narrow enough that hopefully nobody does because wouldn't be very comfortable. That's the elementary school. Any questions there? All right, we're going to move into the middle school and the high school. <coughs> here's our scope. Quite a bit of it, as you know. So here's our site plan. Um, and here's the big uh, three-story addition up in the corner. Um, this is the piece that we had to go to uh, zoning to get a a variance for. Um, we are reconfiguring the sidewalk here and then losing some parking along the front here, um, but bringing back a, a drop off lane. We haven't quite figured out if this is where buses go or if the buses go uh, somewhere else on site. And this is parent um, pick up and drop off here, but there is enough space for three buses to pull in up in this area here. And then basically from here on is as is. So this is your existing uh, handicap parking. Um, this is all existing here. Uh, we've been looking at a place to put the dumpsters. So we'll likely lose probably <coughs> two more parking spots up in the Northwest corner of the parking lot. Um, but otherwise everything else up there will remain as is. So we've got the big three-story addition here, uh, the gym lobby which we um, bumped out to provide more space um, in that for, for your big games in the lobby space. Uh, the corridor addition to connect back through into the, the main part of the original building. Cafeteria addition here. And then the middle school entry vestibule here. Um, so this is the lower level plan and we're gonna look at the plans and the interior spaces first, and then we'll look outside at the exterior perspective, and then I'll let Greg run his um, model around a little bit. So this is the ground floor, uh, and we need we call the floors a little bit different than you guys do. We call your top floor three because there are code implications to a four-story building that we don't have to deal with if it's a three-story building, and technically you are a three-story building, uh, because enough of this is below grade that it's actually considered a basement. So our numbering and labeling is a little bit different than what you guys are used to, but just wanted to give you that warning. All right, so our additions over here and downstairs at this level, we've got weights and wrestling, uh, two locker rooms, two health classrooms that are uh, dividable with a movable partition. Uh, we ended up getting another classroom space over here, athletic storage, a small restroom, 
uh, office for the coaches training space um, with a, a tub um, and a space for tables. Uh, these are the stairs that go up to the main entry and the elevator in this corner. So your storm shelter is this box here. So this is the piece that is hardened above and these doors as well. So these doors will be on hole opens because they're super heavy and shouldn't operate very often. Um, so that will be the, the your hardened space. Um, in the boiler room then, we've got space, the sprinklers are already there, um, space for mechanical here and electrical there. A dock lift down into the existing um, uh, stairwell here, and then in through a new door into a receiving area. So this is basically the area where we're filling in the floor where that big pit is now. And wow, then the wow staging area will be at the same level as the top of that pit currently is. This area here, accessible off of the cafeteria, is another two, two foot nine or three feet taller. So there's a ramp that takes you up here and then around the corner to these spaces. Um, so we've got restrooms here, team kitchen, uh, cafeteria. Basically, the line of your existing cafeteria is right here. So we have reoriented the steps um, to get better circulation in and through the space. Uh, we've, this is an existing storage room, but we've carved out um, two new meeting spaces. And these walls are glass, but foldable. So they can all fold and step back against this wall in this case and this wall in this case. So these meeting rooms will be able to be opened up um, to the rest of the cafeteria and used in conjunction with them or closed down and used separately. Uh, we've removed this wall here. So when you come into the cafeteria, you can either go here to the lines straight ahead or in through the space. Uh, this is the new serving line here. Um, we've got built-in trash and recycling at various locations. The cafeteria then steps out to grade, so you're not in a fishbowl anymore. Um, this, these doors right here will go straight out uh, to a grade level instead of being set down. Um, let's see what else is down here. We've got Um, choir and band. So this is where your wrestling and stage spaces currently are in your choir classroom. Uh, after meeting with that staff uh, several times, we landed on a larger choir room where the wrestling and stage currently is. Um, a flex classroom that can be used by all the fine arts suite. So um, drama classes, uh, extra ensemble classes, music classes, whatever. Um, and also theater tech, I think, in that space as well. We've got some storage, these purple rooms are storage, two restrooms down there, and then three practice rooms with acoustic treatments on all the walls. Um, these spaces will have acoustic treatments as well. And then these are the three new high school classrooms where student services currently is. I've got some 3D views of these areas as well. So here we've got wrestling, storage that's accessible from the weight room and from the wrestling area. Uh, the locker rooms here with showers in the back, changing areas in the front. Uh, elevation, so just showing where we've got um, accent colors, mirrors, pads, wall pads, things like that. This is that classroom suite um, with the movable partition in the middle. And then that extra classroom, we got athletic storage here, coaches and training there. And these are uh, locker rooms um, upstairs, which is the upstairs locker rooms. Wrong floor on that one. A uh, little closer look at the cafeteria. We're pretty excited about the team kitchen. Um, we've got uh, ranges and hoods here, uh, wall ovens, and then several different stations. So there's 
couple locations for sinks, uh, monitors here, and then these we envision as um, movable tables that can slide underneath these island pieces. So you can get a whole bunch of people gathered in the middle of the space or pull those out um, and then monitors to show what's going on in the class. Refrigerators here, um, some casework on the walls for storage as well. Again, the furniture is just a suggestion, but we've been talking from the start about making sure that we provide a variety of different types of seating in the cafeteria. So keeping your eight person tables, but then looking at some newer options as well. Some views of those walls. This is just a thought on what may be at the end of that um, corridor. We've got a couple different ideas. Nothing, none of that set in stone yet, um, a view of this new space. So this line of columns is basically where the cafeteria ends today. So this is all new beyond. Um, you can see these windows come down a little bit farther. Those are those doors going straight out. Again, just the thought on what might be an accent wall and then the, the stairs going up to the existing landing. Uh, these are those music spaces, the fine arts spaces. So these are the types of views that we use to talk with the um, staff and the faculty about what was in each of these spaces. Moving up to the next level then, we've got student services here in the addition, the new entry, new high school entry here, a uh, new gym here, renovated locker rooms, the new gym lobby, um, new restrooms here and here, um, the middle school office where the central office currently is, new middle school vestibule, two new middle school classrooms, and then re-envisioned media center with a new maker space over here. Um, so student services suite is first. Um, so this is the secure vestibule straight into a reception desk with some signage on the wall behind. Um, all of the uh, social worker, um, counselors, offices, student services, registrar, et cetera. Conference room here, um, restrooms for staff, storage, and then the nurses suite, again with an isolation room um, right there. Restroom, two cot areas, and then an office for the nurse. Um, so this wall here is all glass. Uh, and then these will be kind of a, a big um, stair up to the second floor space above, which is now um, alternative programs. So here's the 3D view of that. You can see the glazing along the front and here, conference rooms. Again, the furniture is just a suggestion at this point. The new gym with the divider curtain, we've got six basketball goals, a uh, climbing wall, spot for a climbing wall here, um, and then bleachers that I believe seat about 130, if I recall. And then some Julie, windows facing out, yep. With, with the gym, um, it looks like sharing a wall with that office suite. Um, what's the like noise mitigation? It's CMU, it, it's concrete black, so it will be really thick, so it shouldn't be an issue. Um, here's some of those walls. So the green is uh, ductwork. That's the way it shows up in our models. Um, we took these straight out of our models today. Some of the stuff is things that will be um, in the walls that show up as though it's not at this point in time. But here's the bleachers, goals, windows, wall pads. Uh, this is inside um, coming through the secure entry and into the corridor. Um, we've got the windows that look out into the courtyard over here, and then these are the counselor's offices. So we wanted to be able to capture some daylight and bring them into those offices. We've got um, frosted uh, glazing up high that will bring natural light into those spaces. Again, just a thought on um, colors. We've got a kind of interesting panel, um, acoustic panel ceiling in these spaces. So we'll be able to capture some of the height on the ceiling, um, but at the same time, high uh, mechanical and that kind of thing above this decorative ceiling. And then the stairs going up to the second floor. 
Um, this is the gym lobby. So we've expanded that out. I'm gonna go back for a second. Oops, too far, here we go. We've increased the size of the gym lobby. Um, currently the wall is about here. Uh, and so we bumped that out because it just didn't seem like it was enough space to get 500 people in and out of the gym. Um, so this gives people a space to gather before they go into the gym, uh, big bank restrooms, a family toilet, and a new concession stand here. And then this is glazing, looking out into the courtyard. And this is the new corridor piece. So these are your existing stairs. Um, we reconfigured that we were gonna move the stairs outbound and have the corridor come through here. But instead we're able to keep your existing stairs and shift the corridor out so that you've got this, this as your straight connection um, back into the main part of the building. And then your new restrooms. So basically the, this flipped um, and the restroom is pushed against the gym wall instead of over here. And then the other restroom here. In any case, these were the restrooms that we, because of supervision concerns, weren't able to make um, gender neutral. So where we had the opportunity, we made the girls bigger, but we aren't doing urinals anywhere. So in the future, if you wanna switch those, you're welcome to do that. So, um, to the gym lobby. So these are the new doors going to the gym. This is concessions. That's not the refrigerator you'll have. And there will be a coiling, uh, a coiling door here most of the time. And then this is that bank of restrooms, uh, the door into the existing lobby in the family restroom. And then the big wall of glass looking out into the courtyard here. This is the new middle school office. So jumping over to the other wing of the building, we've got the new vestibule here. So this is the existing central office. Um, the door of the central office is currently, I believe right about here. Um, so we are making a new door here, um, secure entry. So once this is locked, people will have to come in here to the middle school admin area big desk with enough space for two, a seating area here. Again, a space for uh, digital welcome signage. Um, offices and conference rooms. We've got another uh, mother's room, staff restroom, work room with copier, uh, kitchenette, coffee area. The SRO has an office in this space and then storage for the admin suite there. Um, and uh, the R&D. So we've really tried to re-envision the R&D and it's pretty substantially um, different than what you all are used to now. Uh, this is currently where kind of your big group gatherings are. So we flip-flop that um, and we'll have space for, this is seating for 48 uh, with a monitor set up similar to what you have now, but in this area of the, of the building. And that was really a function of um, trying to get this maker space as an enclosed uh, box that worked with the existing ceilings. So that was really the challenge in this place is how to, in this space is how to um, get enclosed areas, uh, smaller classrooms, carve out space within the, that big gym volume. So uh, this was also a function of having plumbing over here in this corner. So that worked out really well. So we've got a big maker project space casework along these walls, monitors, again, flexible furniture, but this is not necessarily what we'll end up with, uh, keeping the IDF and the roof access here. Then we've moved the desk currently is right about here. We'll provide a new desk over in this area so that the librarian has supervision of all these spaces. As you can see here, see this direction into the corner, see through this glass into the maker space. Um, and then carving out um, small group gathering areas. So these are booths that will have kind of some tall dividers, um, but give kids kind of a sense of enclosure without actually enclosing them in a separate room. Um, kids love booths. So we've got several of them right here, computer stations, um, other types of uh, gathering spaces, and then some reading nooks built into this wall. 
and a new gaming area or um, whatever kind of presentation space you might want to have here, but we've envisioned it as a gaming area and we've heard that that's something that the librarian wanted to incorporate. So uh, kind of a, a monitor space here and then uh, space to gather uh, in front of that. Um, and then we'll be reusing the existing shelving, uh, but decreasing it. So there will be a little bit less. We understand that there's more shelving that's required for your collection. Um, and then updating the finishes in this space as well. Here's some of the views of that, the new desk um, wall in the project space. There's that uh, gaming area built into the corner. Um, and then up to the third floor. So we've got the new restroom. Julie, here. Julie, yeah. sorry, before you move on. Um, sure. Is the, the entry to the library going to be a secure entry going forward to, is there like some sort of I don't know, buzzer system or something that's gonna be installed there? We weren't planning on changing the hardware there, okay. um, but we can uh, we can look at that if there's I, I, an operation I was, that- I was curious just because of, you know, the hardening of, of other entries, um, but that was just a clarifying question. No, our goal is to just have students and visitors come through the two entries. So either the middle school entry or the high school entry where somebody lays eyes on them and you know make sure that they belong in the building. Um, there will be other, we're implementing an access control system. So we'll have card swipes um, and there will be other locations where staff and uh, admin faculty with the card swipes will be able to enter and leave the building. Um, but our goal is to not have people just approaching a door and trying to get in it. If there's an operation or function that you would like at that door um, that the current hardware doesn't provide, then let us know. It's probably more of just a culture shift that'll have to happen. Yeah, like, and it, it, it will have, um, you know, you'll be able to dog it down and unlock it if you have events in there after hours, just like you do now. So that's really a up to you. But if we need to put an intercom there or something like that, um, that goes to one of the offices, we can we can do that, we just need to know. I think our thought was, Katie, we weren't going to put intercoms or buzzers because if they're there, people will want to use them for entry and be upset if they're not able to be buzzed in from that door. So we wanna keep that door secure and locked. Uh, and drive people to other doors with buzzers, buzzers and intercoms. Yeah, the one exception to that is the um, uh, alternative programs door. So the door, um, here I'll show you on this plan before we go upstairs and look at their suite, but the door right here into this stairwell will have an intercom that will go up to the students or, or the uh, alternative programs suite. So if their students arrive in unusual hours or if they have guests or um, therapists or counselors that need to go up there, uh, they will be able to get access. Um, but this one's kind of tucked around the corner and we've, it's been a, We've, we've walked a fine line between making sure that they um, have an identity and that they have signage and that this, the, it feels like an entry to their space without it seeming like a door that other people ought to um, go and try to get into. So when we look at the exterior, you can kind of see we've got big canopies over these doors, which definitely draw a whole lot more attention to these entries and a very small canopy with some signage over this one. So. Hopefully um, it may take, you know, a little bit of getting used to, but uh, we think people should uh, understand pretty quickly what the doors, which doors they should be going in. Let's see, so here we've got the alternative program suite. So that's that stair um, and it's got a big window back here. So it doesn't feel like an, an entry stair and we actually, 
put that glazing in there before we change the function of this stair anyway, because we needed it, it needed some interest on this, um, on this west facade anyway. So that worked out well. Um, this is their lobby space here. Um, and we've got uh, coat hooks and um, some casework here. We'll have welcome signage up above that casework and then um, some inspirational graphics on this wall here. Um, off of the lobby then, they have a staff space that is very similar to the um, conference, the small conference room that they have in SSC house currently with some storage. Uh, these monitors are on, for, in our, for our purposes, just a location to provide a connection. So you all have the flexibility in the future to put monitors in all of these spaces. We don't see that as something you do straight off the bat, but the um, flexibility, the infrastructure is in place. So we've got um, three SSC classrooms and then SSC four is a future classroom that can be used as a conference room in the meantime. Uh, we've got a big gathering space with the kitchenette where they um, get eat breakfast. Uh, restrooms, we've got Missouri options here, BDE and SAGE. So students coming in to SAGE um, will come straight down here or into BDE and then into this space here. Um, two therapy rooms, um, some storage along the wall. And then these spaces have skylights. So we've got one in Missouri Options, one in BDE, one in Sage. Then I think we just this week um, decided we to add two in the gathering space. So they're not uh, really large um, uh, skylights. We've got a pile of skylights in the gym as well so that on a bright day, um, you'll be able to have gym class in there without turning on very many of the lights. Uh, and then the PDL is here. So coming up the stair from the entry corridor, um, we'll have the PDL and then the PDL storage with the existing casework that you all have in the central office now. Um, storage casework here, we've got locations identified for uh, marker boards, projector boards, and pack boards as well. That's about all in that suite. This is that gathering space, uh, skylights, monitor, uh, whiteboard, tack surfaces. These are the doors into the SSC classrooms. Again, colors and furniture are just a, just to make it look like a functional space at this point in time. Um, so going up then to what you all call the fourth floor, this is the existing middle school admin suite. Um, they've decided to use these classrooms uh, as um, SSC classrooms. So they're smaller classrooms and then we're keeping the door that's currently to the assistant principal's office off of the commons as the entry to one of those spaces and then the existing middle school office door as the entry to the other classroom. And then we're carving out a staff lounge because we took the staff lounge at the end of the corridor and turned it in, into two staff restrooms. Uh, so a new space for kitchenette coffee bar up there. Um, the green are the high school classrooms and then the blue are middle school classrooms. So we are, our understanding is that this door this partition in this door here was once the division between middle school and high school. So we are proposing to use it in that manner again. Um, and these will then be middle school or high school classrooms because the middle school is getting, oops, sorry, they're getting the ones um, outside of the central office, wherever this plan is, there we go. They're getting these three and then these two new ones. So I think we have exceeded um, everybody's class needs, which actually are not needs, they're projected anyway. So we've um, allowed for growth and then also have a couple of extra classrooms. All right, what else do I have? Uh, same with the rest restrooms new restrooms in those locations as well. So this is the palette for the high school. Um, most of 
the um, space is a VCT. So the carpet is used very selectively in a couple of locations. Uh, accent colors here, uh, desk surfaces for the reception areas, acoustic tile ceiling, the doors will match the existing, uh, restroom wall tiles. Uh, we'll have a terrazzo on the um, stair in the new entrance area, weight room flooring, um, residence flooring in the locker rooms. The gym floor will be wood. And then we've got some LVT, like a basket weave look, LVT in the um, admin suite. And then onto the exterior. So here's the north um, elevation, the new middle school entry here, and the new high school entry here. So as you can see, these canopies are considerably larger and I think work well to draw attention to these as entries versus this little tiny one that we've got here over alternative programs. And then this one's just a, an entry or an exit door. Um, so we've got a brick infill where that uh, old storefront is in the um, superintendent's office. New storefront along the front of the building. Got a canopy that comes out into partly into the courtyard. And the model that Greg has will speak much better to this site stuff than these do. Um, but we did these for the design and review board review back in February. Uh, we would like to do some kind of signage here. This is not the final design on that. Uh, then we've got a retaining wall across the front um, and a ramp down to the entry here. Because uh, as you know, the site is sloping as you go to the west. And this is also at a different floor level than this piece of the building. Um, so this is alternative programs up here and the gym volume here. That's the gym again, alternative programs and the student services suite. This is moving around the corner of the building into the courtyard. So this is the high school entry and there's a ramp down along the face of the building and then stairs in the courtyard to get down to this level. Um, so this is that new uh, entry space with the stairs and then the new gym lobby here. This is the west side. So coming down, um, to the cafeteria. So up here is the new gym volume. Um, that's that alternative programs door. And here's the ramp down to the high school entry. Uh, loading dock in this vicinity. This is your existing cafeteria door. And then from here over is new. So we've extended the barrel vault on the cafeteria, the new taller windows. And then some ramping, Greg can get into this as well, the ramping down um, from the cafeteria level to the concession stand. Um, this is the west side of the gym. The cafeteria piece a little bit bigger. There's the south side of the cafeteria. Existing building here, and then ramp down to the cafeteria level from the upper um, level of the bleachers. Uh, materials, we've got the metal canopies and aluminum storefront, a ground face CMU on the block, on the base, and then masonry everywhere else. We'll match your brick. Uh, this is just a couple views of that ground face CMU. So it, it has a um, look and texture like a polished limestone, um, but it's actually a, a CMU product. It looks pretty slick in person. Couple more images of that. I guess, Greg, are you ready? Whatever you are. All right. Well, I will let you show them the courtyard. Here's a view back. Okay. And I'll stop sharing. And I will try to share mine. If it will cooperate. Bear with me just a second. It isn't operating just yet.
Here we go. Got it. Should be there now. Did it pop up? Yes. Okay. So there's a couple things. I'm going to leave it here in this sort of overview for a second and say a couple things before we start. Um, the first is that the courtyard space is pretty unique on your campus. And um, by that, I mean, there aren't a whole lot of good um, outdoor secure spaces that can be garden-like and um, safe for kids to play and participate in together. Um, this, is, this is the one. And everything we're doing is, is making better those things. It, it's more difficult for people that shouldn't be in there to get in there now. Not impossible, but still um, much more secure than it currently is. And what occurs to me is that um, it really has the potential to be a very nice space. And um, the, the rub is that um, sometimes um, facilities people don't like to maintain a whole lot of vegetation. And so I think I'm hopefully um, going to get some information from you about how you all feel about that. I, I kind of went into a middle ground in terms of how much um, planting materials we put in there. I think there could be a lot more than I've reflected. And if you're comfortable with having people maintain it, then we can certainly do that. Um, what we've done is um, created, like I said, a secure courtyard where um, we didn't really want to increase the amount of paving that was out there from a from the standpoint of managing water out there, um, MSD is very fussy about how that works. And so we reconfigured the paving in ways that sort of kept it fairly neutral. So it's a similar amount, but just amount which is configured differently. And effectively the way it works is um, there's a generous mixing area in the middle that can work. You can see the bench component that's here in the front part of it. Um, that can work as an outdoor classroom. and. The bench was originally done as a little bit more of a serrated thing, but it's a continuous piece now. So there's a sitting area on this whole thing. And that was necessary to make the grade transition that happens there regardless. So you get um, a retaining wall. So the grade works, the ramp slopes down to either side of it. This is then level with this area in the middle. So it's comfortable for people to use and walk on. Um, so you've got one essentially outdoor classroom space here. You've got a second one where we took advantage of the stair dimension. So the stair winds up being a nice sitting area and you can sit people on that and then have somebody speaking to them in this zone. So essentially you get two outdoor classroom spaces that are all clean and part of a bigger one that can be used for an outdoor event of some kind. You can see it's really quite generous. And the ramp system is a little complicated, but I think Clint works cleanly. And so we managed to make the grade change that happens. There's about when you factor in the floor level change, it's close to seven feet of level change between the entry here and the entry here. So all this stuff fits together in the way that it does so that, first of all, people that the courtyard is an egress path. So it's a way for people to get out of the building in an event where they need to, um, and it has to be accessible. So we've got an accessible route out from everything in that courtyard space by virtue of this ramp right here and the ramp or sidewalk condition on the side over there. And then obviously they can go up the stairs here or up the stairs there or ramp out this way. That's the um, ADA compliant path. And um, so obviously we've got some retaining walls that are making some of these things possible, but I think we've taken good advantage of them so that um, they don't look as workmanlike as you might think a retaining wall does. There's a planting bed in front of them. We think we plant the bed fairly um, aggressively with low stuff in the front and then probably arborvitae or something like that along the wall so that the wall doesn't feel as imposing um, as it might if it were just um, undifferentiated. Um, the signage component, we're gonna obviously have another discussion with you about what the right thing to put there. I, I like the version that we have here now, just from the standpoint of it, it can vary from one side to the other and still be legible. Um, obviously on the other side, it's not as tall. And so it's a more kind of a horizontal element there but taking advantage of the M, which is multi-directional, it can do that on the other side. And um, obviously we can come up, um, somebody had mentioned previously that some type of an artwork piece might be something you guys would gravitate towards. And we're happy to help you with figuring out what that might be. And, and even designing it, if you like, we, we can come up with some nice ideas for that. So there's the ramp, there's the other stair. And again, the view back into that space there's a considerable level change between that sidewalk right there and down in here. So there's a, there's a slope here and we're going to, we're going to build a curb along that thing to keep the planting materials in the bed. 
And I think that's a place where you would certainly plant a little bit heavier. Um, if you don't, then there'll be a tendency for the landscaping materials to wash down the hill and out of the bed and into the courtyard where you'll have to deal with those. I think if we plant this a little bit more nicely along that edge, the planting materials will hold a lot of that stuff in place better. And then of course you have the option on the other side to be a little bit more aggressive there if you choose to as well. And that then boils down to how you all feel about facilities, people maintaining um, planting materials. And frankly, that whatever your answer is will steer us a little bit to what type of planting materials it might be. Obviously evergreens have less stuff coming off them than um, deciduous trees would. Although the, the leafy trees are pretty nice at certain times, especially in spring, which is coming. So the idea of having some dogwoods or something in there that show a little color from time to time or red buds is kind of a nice idea. So, um, and then we also think that this space can do more than um, daytime duty for you. And we have put some architectural lighting into the space so that um, I think it really speaks well to the kind of events that you have out there. There's a series of bollards here that will um, provide low level lighting and a couple appropriately placed um, taller lamp posts that will spread a little bit more data, uh, lighting around the um, transitional space in the middle here. And obviously if you need a little bit more or less than what we've shown, we can make that work. But overall, I think it's a nice space. It looks into the new spaces that we've done for you in the building. So there's a nice indoor outdoor kind of feel to the way a lot of that stuff works. The people that are in those spaces and Frankly, back here where the gym lobby is, we are gonna be able to see into those spaces um, from there. So in a way that a lot of your building doesn't work right now, you're gonna have a really indoor outdoor experience that I think is a nice one. So um, that's, a, I think an overview. What, what questions can I answer for you, any? Do you have the cafeteria and Greg in this model? Um, I think it's in here, but I think the, the drawings are a better reflection. Uh, I, it's not been built into this one because this was sawed off from an energy standpoint. So I could, while we're talking about other things, I think I have a copy of the SketchUp model that's in my, um, on my computer, if we want me to get that. I bet but that I don't here too, but, um, and I've also got a site plan that shows where the gates are that will secure this area too. Those are, um, reflected in the way this thing's put together. There's a sliding gate that's right here that will slide behind the landscaping materials and it will slide across here and latch at that point in behind the post where you can't see. There's another um, gate component that happens right here that closes this, um, this stairway off. And the final of the three gates is right there at the opening to that ramp. And, and obviously the point here isn't to make this into a um, a, a fortress or a prison enclosure. Um, obviously somebody can climb over some of these fences if they choose to, but it's funny how fences and gates work. As soon as you put them in, most people respect the fact that they're close, they're crossing something that they're not supposed to. And so, and some of these will be a little bit more difficult to climb over than others. So um, we think we tried to strike a balance between safety and security and something that didn't look like a fortress at the same time. So questions? So um, I don't, well, I have some questions, but I want to kind of go back to that, uh, the gates that you just were showing. Mm -hmm. And if I can bring Wes into the conversation, I know in last meeting, Wes had asked about um, the security of that space. I think I have clarity on it. I just want to make sure that he feels like he got his question answered last time based upon how this looks different than what we we're anticipating. Yeah, it does look different. And um, I think that uh, I have uh, I have a satisfactory look at what we are going to have uh, in the future here. So I'm, I think this will be fine. I've got the plan to Wes, if you want to see it in plan. Okay. Okay, thank you. And then my other comment is around the, um, the plantings and the vegetation. Um, I don't know this school district to be um, afraid of that. And I think um, we're quite accustomed to doing that. But I would say my recommendation is um, what, what Mike and his team feel are uh, manageable. I think what we can do then is um, this model is going to be transferred um, into a, a landscaping site plan that will reflect planting choices and materials. 
And so what we'll do is we'll coordinate that with them and make sure that the uh, end result, which will go into the document set and reflect the planting choices and materials and distribution is something that they get a chance to review. And I'll just add, I know Greg, Greg I've talked with Greg and, and Julie at length about the fact that this is a highly used space. And so we don't want the plantings to interfere. We want the plantings to enhance the people experience, but not get in the way of the people experience. So we want to be careful when we're planting that we can still have our big events. We could still have homecoming celebrations. We can still do lots of things. I think the design he's showing through will here will let that happen, but we, we don't want to crowd out the intended uses of the large group gatherings in the space. We agree completely on that. And um, one thing to think about, you don't have to answer right now, but you can think about it next time we talk. Um, you'll have an opinion then perhaps. Um, if, if we plant grass in this area where the black grass is reflected, um, chances are that it will be beaten down because of the traffic that will be there. And so my sense is we should err on the side of caution about grass and do more landscaping materials instead. There's nothing nice about um, a muddy area that you can't keep the grass growing in. Um, and um, this is a fairly generous area in the middle. And when you combine it with the, um, the flat surface area in there, it seems comfortably large that you don't have to then rely on um, plant more material in terms of um, walking area and working area and living space over here. And frankly, from the standpoint of MSD, we can't really increase it in that way anyway. So I would be inclined to do more landscape materials and those things over here rather than trying to make the grass work. Y'all have a thought on that? My initial thought is I love grass. So <laughs> let's noodle on it. Okay, good enough. I think the back end here is um, there's an area where with the retaining walls and such, there's less traffic through here probably, and the access points to it are off to either side. So it doesn't strike me, you know, a lot of times when we do university work, um, universities sometimes choose to not put in sidewalks until the kids have lived in it for a while, and then they find out where they're walking and they put the sidewalks there. Um, in this case, we know there won't be much traffic across the back there. My sense is there will be unanticipated traffic through here and, um, We'll have to try and account for it in some way, I think. I'm excited by what I see, though. I think at the end of the day, if it's planted correctly, it's a really nice asset for your community. And um, and you could even see some special events being hosted there in ways that maybe you don't do now. That, um, you know, I, I would think people would they're be willing to consider at times paying you some um, rental fee in order to use a space like that, that, that maybe serves your needs. So something you can think about. Any other questions, comments? I have, I'm um, sorry. I don't mean to be the one hog in the conversation. And I, 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 it's really not a question. I think it's just a thinking for, as we move forward, um, around parking, I realize that we're taking some parking spaces out. I also realize that some of the parking spaces that are currently taken by admin will be offset to another space. Um, but with that being said, we're we have a larger school population coming in. That means more student drivers as well. So um, seems to be like the one conversation that never stops is what are we going to do about parking? So not looking for the answer today, just making sure that we continually put that on the radar screen as we move forward. We can certainly do that. You know, the funny thing is there's always some areas around that you haven't fully considered. Um, and the only question then will be how aggressive do you want to be in order to claim them? Because often they're in places that are not quite as secure or visibly secure. And they're often sort of fringe places. And sometimes the cost of making them work is prohibitive. So why don't we try and look at the site collectively and see where else there are areas we might be able to grab. And then you can review that to see if some of them suit your needs. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I just have one more uh, observation. Um, will there be a, a horticulturist or somebody who discusses with you the, the kinds of plants that go into these spaces because of the, uh, the available sunlight and some of the other issues that might uh, favor one plant type over another? Or do you guys... We have um, people on staff, including myself, that are um, pretty well versed in these things. And so okay. um, we'll bring to the table some of the considerations about um, 
limitations of plants. So for example, you know, if you're going to put dogwood trees out there and they have to bear up the full sun, they have to be a specific kind of dogwood tree that are dogwoods are typically understudy understory trees. There's things that grow under larger trees, but they're the Coosa dogwoods are capable of managing full light. So we'll look at the species and talk about the distribution, the, the um, evergreens that are up against the retaining wall. Those are, um, things that most of us know from our neighborhoods where people are using them for screen elements. So we'll have a well-rounded, we will not put any crab apples out there um, or things like them, which everybody curses uniformly when they fall on the paving and get matched. Um, so we, we do enough schools that we know where the lightning rods in terms of the trees are. And hopefully we can get all that right for you. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh-huh. Well, uh, thank you, Julie and Greg and um, the rest of the Itner team. Uh, this was very thorough. All right. Thank you all. All right. Our next agenda item is our COVID data update. So I'll let Roxana uh, handle that. All right. Get that up on the screen here and I'll be ready to go. So uh, another week where I get to tell you that case rates are continuing to drop more rapidly than we anticipated. But before I begin this presentation, I want to again reiterate what I talked to the, the health department team with every week that while case rates are dropping, uh, we have to continue to, to do our due diligence uh, in the community and to make sure that we're not relaxing uh, too quickly our mitigation measures simply because the data is, is looking better than it has looked in a while. So uh, we are cautiously optimistic with the data and I'll be giving you some updates as we go. So when we look at the data this week, we'll see that case rates in Missouri and in St. Louis County have dropped uh, again. Uh, this is many days in a row with declining case rates, although I will tell you in the last three days they've stalled out. So uh, we're kind of in a flat space currently. The transmission rate remains below one, which is uh, what we want, uh, which means that cases are in decline. We'd love to see that go much lower than it currently is. Uh, we did pre cross the threshold uh, with this particular report. We were waiting for the seven day per 100,000 case rate to get below 50 and the 14 day case rate to get below 200 uh, to put us solidly in that yellow or moderate zone. This is the first time we've seen that since I've been running these reports. And so we're very happy about that. We'd like to remain in that space and we'd like to get lower in the moderate range uh, and not be hovering uh, near, near the, the area of concern before we get too excited about it. But we definitely have moved in the right direction in terms of what we're seeing with case rates. Positivity rate is as low as I've seen it in a while. Uh, I'm talking to the health department this morning. Testing rates have remained high. So they are uh, very optimistic about the current positivity rates that they're seeing. Uh, in terms of our zip code data, we have a mixed bag. We actually saw the numbers drop in the Richmond Heights area, but we've increased by a few in the Maplewood uh, community. When we look at our student age populations, uh, we'll notice that we've had declining case rates for our student age populations. We are very solidly in the yellow for our zero through age nine group. We're lower than we've been in a while uh, for our next age group and our uh, 15 to 19 year old age group still remains a little higher than we would care to see. In the moderate zone still, but they are the highest uh, risk group based on our current cases. When we look at our positive cases within MRH, we had no new active cases within the last 14-day uh, period, which is great. Uh, and that's what we want to see. So just a shout out to all the families and all the staff who've been doing all the right things to make sure that our case rates remain low. We also, uh, we do have one, uh, remaining active student case rate who rolled off probably the, you know, he did roll off the day after I did this report. So currently, uh, as of today, we have no active student cases. 
quarantine list, uh, we have two students that are quarantined based on off-campus exposure, and we have three staff members who are currently in quarantine based on off-campus exposure. And remember that quarantining is one of our primary safety strategies to make sure that we don't inadvertently have on-campus spread. When we look at the vaccine, uh, we will see that uh, currently the county percentage vaccinated of at least one dose is lagging uh, again behind the state. And as of Tuesday, uh, the county has been able to give about 130,000 uh, doses. They are estimating they have about 350,000 still in tier 1B without including the educational staff and the folks who have been uh, added. I will tell you that I am working with uh, the team that's been meeting since the pandemic started. We are planning mass vaccination events for teachers. So we plan on having those open and rolling. The plan now is to do a cooperative approach across the region uh, and we'll be staging those vaccination events at kind of neutral party sites. Right now we're looking at the community college system that's already scaled for that. Uh, our district will be supplying volunteers to help work those events. Um, and we are working on a coherent strategy, primarily dependent on age bands, on um, the folks who have the most uh, access to students. So prioritizing, for example, some of our SSC staff who have to work very close proximity with kids who are unable to wear masks. Um, and so there'll, there'll be a system by which we prioritize teachers. Um, and then teachers from all districts will sign up in those priority bands for the max va mass vaccination events. We feel like we have really solid pod planning moving forward for how to get that done. What is unknown at this point is the quantity of vaccine that the county will receive. They are currently only receiving 2,000 doses a week, and that has to include all of the 300,000 you know, people that have gone before in tiers while they also create a new lane for educational staff. Um, we're hopeful that as the infrastructure uh, is available, more vaccine will follow as they know that they're able to, to, to vaccinate in, in large quantities. Um, we hear new vaccine is coming and that those vaccine uh, distribution sites should increase. But at this point, um, the, the hold back on all of these plans is just getting enough vaccine in the county to, to do the work. In the meantime, uh, I have shared a number of vaccine signups uh, scenarios with teachers, and we do have a fair number of staff who've been able to receive vaccines uh, through other means. I'm happy to report that all of our teachers that were on uh, medical restrictions have, have been able to have vaccines, and all of all are being able to return to work within the next few weeks. So um, we're inching along. If there's a long road to go yet before we're free and clear, and I don't want anybody to think that on March 15th everybody's going to get vaccinated and life will go back to normal because it's likely to be several months yet before all of that evens out. Um, in addition to that, I did want to say to the board that once the case rate started to uh, begin to fall, uh, actually even before that, you know we've had a very solid tier plan for a long time, but as the case rate started to fall, the admin team as well as your pandemic response uh, leaders have been revisiting our tier one plans because we don't want to be behind the curve when conditions are right for return. And so we've be begun examining our published tier one plans in light of what we've learned uh, living in tier two. Um, we're going through each of those pieces because when we're ready to recommend a return to tier one, uh, we're not going to abandon our mitigation strategies. Um, we're going to make sure that all of the things are in place that we can keep in place. Uh, the pain points that will be um, decision-making factors that, that we will have to consider as we consider the external case rates really are these. Um, we are working on logistics for lunches and how we can safely eat on campus. Uh, we believe we have a nice pod plan for our elementary schools that would allow them to eat either outside or in their classrooms within their cohorts so the cohorting remains intact. It is much more challenging at the high school, middle school campus. So we're having to look at reconfiguring either lunch shifts or um, building out more plexi. Um, and so we're really examining those spaces. Uh, we also have talked about bus runs that will require us to increase the capacity on the bus. So right now we do every other seat. Uh, we need community conditions to get low enough that we feel comfortable with a student in every seat with seating near windows and aisles. 
um, which I think makes sense as the case rates lower. So we, we've looked at what that might look like. Um, we have looked at your biggest barrier, honestly, in the middle school, high school, as you know, we have uh, limited space for more kids. Um, and our furniture configurations are a problem for us because everything we've built has been built, built on good instructional practice and collaborative work. And so we have collaborative work tables in the classrooms as opposed to individual desks, which of course are much harder to space and maintain spacing. And we literally cannot afford to buy all new furniture for the spaces. So we've got um, our friends who are architectural experts coming back in. We are resetting some classrooms to review what that looks like. Uh, we've got some ideas about how to use the existing plastic plexiglass, excuse me, on every other seat. But uh, we could not bring every kid back in the building and maintain the six feet recommendations. So with lower community spread rate, uh, we can look at the three to six feet recommendations and probably be able to find a way to do that safely. Um, but we're going to need a minute uh, to re-examine furniture, which is, you know, what is great for us in normal times for instruction is not necessarily built for pandemic response. So that is a huge hurdle that actually is one of our biggest hurdles that we're working on right now is how to maintain the physical distancing with the furnishings that we currently own. Um, we also have some concerns that we're working through about our SSD uh, consulting spaces. Many of those spaces and offices are very small and would require multiple students and multiple teachers to be in the spaces. Again, in a normal time that works really well, it does not work well uh, currently. So uh, every time we bring more kids back into the building, things get more compressed. And so we have to think through um, can we move it? Can we space it? Can we schedule it? Um, and so those are the logistics that we're going through space by space currently to make sure that we feel really good about a recommendation to you. A uh, couple additional considerations, obviously, is uh, the more opportunity that families and staff have to receive vaccine means that we have more protection. Um, so we're hoping that uh, we have more time for our most vulnerable family members to also get vaccinated as well as the staff. And then we want to be ultra cautious about the upcoming spring break. We hope that all families uh, remember protocols and remember uh, what happens. But one of the concerns I think that we have as a region is that as the weather gets better and as the case rates look better, that folks feel much, com much more comfortable doing large social events, which of course is, is where a lot of the super spreader kind of activity happens. So we want to uh, see what happens over spring break. I think by our April work session, we'll have a pretty good idea at that point what, what is tracking and um, kind of where we are with, with the things that I've mentioned that continue to be kind of areas of, I think concern may be too strong a word, but certainly things that we need to watch and do very, very thoughtfully. So that's kind of my update of where we are. We do have our eyes on a tier one return. Uh, we are hopeful that we might be able to make that recommendation um, in the upcoming month or so, uh, but that's really gonna depend on what we see with community condition and what kind of answers we can get with our current physical distancing challenges. Happy to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, Roxana has, I think it was a, a positive approach to the switching tiers that we were able to do that kind of uniformly across um, grade levels and buildings. Um, in this, in the conversations about a future, you know, change of tiers, are you talking about? I mean, obviously you've already mentioned some different conditions um, and just limitations in different spaces. Um, uh, might we expect slightly different recommendations um, for different buildings? That's, that's a really great question, Katie. Uh, we actually deliberated that for a, on Tuesday, the principals uh, and the response team were together for quite a while talking about the pros and cons of that approach. I think for students' uh, well-being, we would love to see all of the students back on campus, if at all possible. I will tell you right out the gate that it is a lot more doable currently in our elementary buildings. 
Uh, the middle school and high school has some unique challenges, both in terms of physical space limitations of the building, uh, the entrance and egress challenges in the building, and then the furnishings in particular. Um, and they also currently have the highest case rates. So we've got uh, some logistical challenges that we are aggressively trying to work through to make return for all students possible. But I would not say it's out of the question that we might need to stage that, again, based on community condition or after we do the furniture reset. Um, you know, we don't want to have any scenario by which we've made a decision that causes more students or an inordinate amount of students to have to be out of school in quarantine because we couldn't provide the appropriate physical distancing. Um, we'd rather have them on campus intermittently and consistently on campus than having to have kids out. So that's a really great question that I don't have an answer to other than to say it is possible that that could be our recommendation that we, we do the elementary grades first with a secondary return. And if we did that, it would, prob it would be solely based on the fact that we've got physical space challenges that we have not been able to work through. And I know uh, if I hadn't been doing all the work I was doing, I, it, I understand that, you know, that sounds like a simple task to work through. It really is not based on the complexity of the scheduling and how kids move in the building. Yeah, and just to your, your point about, um, you know, encouraging our community to remain vigilant. Uh, I mean, I think today or the, earlier this week, um, one of our neighboring district high schools had to shut down because of spread across a number of student parties um, that I think there's something like 20% of students were going to be on quarantine. So um, that, that's a very real possibility if we let down our guard too. So. Roxanne, I have a question about um, teachers and vaccines. Um, I, I know we all received a communication from a parent who is concerned about teachers um, being able to easily access the vaccine when March 15th comes around. And uh, I know you and I also talked about this Excuse me, and I'm just, I was thinking on it a little bit more after we talked, and I'm just wondering if there is any way that we can just let our teachers know, like, here are the locations, this is where you can go, something like, okay. We've been doing that consistently as, okay. as we know of them. So they have uh, links to register with all of the known vaccination sites currently, and as we hear of availability, we're also sharing that information with them. Uh, I've had a number of community members, and I'm so appreciative, reach out and want to write the health department on our behalf or do what they can to advocate for local vaccination, um, which I, I'm incredibly appreciative of. But I also need you all to understand that there is a limited amount of vaccine. And so the regional strategy among schools is to try to get as much vaccine into central locations because that saves on the health department staff, it preserves the cold chain storage, and it also allows us to pool our volunteers and resources so that we're getting more people done quickly. And in the hopes that that goes really well, that we get more vaccine because they see that we have the infrastructure to do the large scale vaccination. So uh, there is a team of seven that is being formed right now uh, to work directly with the pod planners at the health department so that everything's ready to go uh, March 15th. Um, and, you know, we didn't volunteer uh, staff to work with them night and day for the next uh, however many weeks because we're a little short staffed <laughs> our own self, but we volunteered to do some uh, freelancing of tasks. So we're going to be contributing volunteers and we may be contributing some messaging that's going out, but it's very much a regional effort among the area superintendents. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions about the COVID data? All right, well, thank you, um, Roxana and team for uh, digging in on this and for the, con 
keeping us uh, up to date. Uh, our last study item this evening is um, around our fundraising platform for the Mitten Scholarship. Um, go ahead, Nikki. Thank you, Katie. I wonder, Ed, are you able to um, pull up the video that you created with our with two of our recipients? Could we um, see that? Yep. Thank you. So while Ed is getting that together, you all, um, he reached out to our recipients from um, the winners of the scholarship from last year, and they took some time to talk with him about the um, Nelson Mitten scholarship and just what they're currently doing. And it's a great video, so I'd like to have you all watch that and our audience see it as well. Hello, everyone. My name is Ed Rich. I'm the Director of Communications for the Maplewood Richmond Heights School District. And we're here to talk to you briefly today about the Nelson Mitten Scholarship Fund. And who better to help me do that uh, than two uh, most recent uh, awardees of the Mitten Scholarship. I'm joined by Erica Long and Whitney Schranz from the class of 20. Um, Erica, I'll ask you to unmute. And if you'll uh, just tell us uh, where, where you are, where are you going to school and how do you like it? Yeah, so right now um, I'm going to Seattle University, which is located in downtown Seattle. Um, I'm currently majoring in economics, um, but I like I love the school and I love the city. So it's going it's going pretty well despite everything that's happening. Do you get to keep in touch with family and friends very often? Yeah, actually, um, I'm in contact with my family like all the time, and then like friend wise, like. Whitney knows we always like we always zoom like once a week like people from high school we have a little group that we're always like staying in touch with each other that's great to hear Whitney I'll bring you in now if you'll unmute yeah hi I'm Whitney Strons. I go to Colorado College in Colorado Springs Colorado um, I plan to major in political science and hopefully go to law school after that and yeah it's really great here I've made a lot of friends the distance has really taught me a lot about myself and just what I can handle and I'm being pushed academically. And as Erica said, the MRH community is great and always there for you. How's the weather in Colorado? It's snowing right now. Like we're kind of having a snowstorm, but I really enjoy that. I love the cold weather. Let's talk a little bit about the Nelson Mitten Scholarship. Mr. Mitten, of course, was a, a quite a pivotal figure in the development of the Maplewood Richmond Heights School District, and he has been since the year 2000. Uh, he was instrumental in hiring many of the individuals who turned around the district's finances and the, uh, the academic performance. Um, what message, uh, Whitney, would you have for Nelson Mitten, if you could speak to him right now? Um, I would obviously just start with a thank you, and just for all that he's done to the community, like. He's kind of an inspiration just because like, I think he had a good balance of career and especially in a career that I would like to go into one day and even with his involvement within the community. Erica, how about you? What would you say to Mr. Mitten? Um, I would also give him a great thank you because as someone who's been in the MRH district my whole life, like even since like ECC level, um, I was definitely able to come into the high school after it had um, been improved greatly. And so I'm going to largely like a big thanks to him because I'm sure he had a lot to do with turning it around, like you said. Um, and I feel like I got a really great um, educational experience out of that. Um, so it was really great just to like be able to continue within the district, knowing that it was knowing that I was going to be able to get a great education out of it. Erica, how did the Mitten Scholarship um, make a difference in, in meeting your particular college needs? And I mean, financially or otherwise? So financially, any bit helps. And I mean that, um, especially going out of state, any scholarship amount is definitely appreciated. Um, and then I would also say that just like on a personal level, like being the recipient of any scholarship is a kind of a big self-confidence boost and then I encourage you 
it encouraged me anyway to like continue to look for other scholarship opportunities because like once you get one you think oh you know I could get a dozen more so I think it's definitely both financial and like it's kind of a self-confidence booster. Whitney what did this scholarship mean for you? Um, kind of just to reiterate what Erica said, like every little bit counts. College is very expensive, as I'm sure everyone knows. And yeah, it is a really big confidence boost. And it's really a nice honor to be like considered for it. And yeah, I think Erica just put it great. You both did. What uh, I, I should point out that this video uh, is designed to be shown to people who might be considering making a donation to the fund for this year's uh, recipients. Um, what would uh, what would you say, Whitney, to someone who is considering possibly making a donation to the Nelson Mitten Scholarship Fund? Um, I think education is always a good investment for anyone, really. I think it really builds self-confidence and creates a great value to society, and you can learn to value yourself through it, too. And yeah, I'd just say, Thank you if you consider it, and it's really life changing. Erica, how about you? Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. I think that any anyone who's considering um, donating to the scholarship, they have to know that it really is appreciated. Um, as, like there were three recipients the year we got it. If there could be more in the coming years, that would be wonderful. Like. I, it feels really good to be able to say like, yeah, I got a scholarship. I put money towards my education. I don't just have to rely solely on loans. And also I would say that, especially during COVID, like uh, finances are gonna be really tight. Um, going to school is maybe gonna even seem like not an option for some people. So the more people willing to, you know, donate to this scholarship fund, the better you're gonna give a lot of kids more opportunities for like furthering their education. Well said. I can't thank both of you enough. I appreciate your time, especially in the middle of the day. I know you're busy and great luck to both of you in the states of Washington and Colorado. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ed. You did such a great job and our former MRH alumni, well, students, now alumni, did a fabulous job. Um, it was, I was so happy just to see them talking about their experience and um, how they benefited from the scholarship. It was just great. So thank you so much, Ed. Um, so as we've discussed, you all, we are going to have that as a part of the scholarship campaign. And earlier um, today, I sent you all an email with three crowdfunding platforms to take a look at. Um, the first is Fundraise Up. Uh, and I like this platform the most because it won't cost us anything if our donors decide that they want to go ahead and pay the processing fee um, for us. So that won't come from the donation that they give to us excuse me, um, the other two options, uh, give GAB, is, that option is for colleges, universities, and K through 12 schools. Um, it's created, you know, purposefully for that. Uh, the problem with that is we would have to contact them for pricing and I'm, I'm just really not trying to spend a lot of money, maybe you all, are okay with it, but I'm just kind of like, no. Uh, I wanna try to keep as much money as we can, um, you know, in, in house for the scholarship. Um, so that's just my take on that, but I wanted to give you all other options. So there's that. And then finally, there is Snowball Fundraising and that platform really focuses on social sharing tools. And so we would be able to send messages out uh, requesting donations, talking about the scholarship across social media platforms. Um, but again, excuse me, there is a transaction rate fee of 2.9% plus 30 cents on top of that for each donation. So that's what they're taking from the donations that are being made. So really the only 
the only um, crowdfunding platform that I could find um, that was not going to take a subs substantial amount of the donation from us was the fundraise up. Now I spoke with Roxana um, prior to our meeting and um, you all of course will have a chance to look at this and you know let us know, but also Roxana, Chris and Ed also need to look at these platforms to see if they meet with security requirements. I'm actually just gonna let you say this Roxana, but I'll let you all know that we talked about this. So Roxana, please take it away. Uh, I, I uh, think it's a great idea. I just said that I wanted to make sure that Chris had an opportunity to, to ask the right tech questions to make sure that all of the security protocols would match whatever our standards currently are. And that if Ed needed to work with the platform or link it to our website, that he needed to feel confident that you know that was easy and, and easy enough to do. So I'd just like to give them an opportunity to get eyes on. And, and check out those angles. That sounds great to me. So what do you all think? As long as we can get the green light from um, Roxana, Ed, and Chris regarding security and the other technical matters, what do you all think? Well, I think, I think that we get time to... you can save the most money for who the money is dedicated for you're better off so i agree strong work on pulling this together thank you nikki yeah thank you yes thank you nikki and i i agree with wes um and yourself i do think that you know the money's for the kids so as much as we can give to them the betters and i, I wanted to say something about the video really quick as well you know every every opportunity i'm just so proud of our kids they they just are so amazing and you know, it's not often that we get to see them in action and, and I just love it. So I just want to thank them, Ed, if you'll give them a special shout out, um, just to thank them for taking the time to do that and giving us an opportunity to see, see them after graduation. I feel like we lose them sometimes, but we just have some awesome kids and I'm so proud. Yeah, Randy, that, that, that was absolutely unscripted. Right. I needed them to speak from the heart. I needed them to speak <laughs> honestly. And they did exactly that. And as soon as I was done with that recording, I ran down to the high school principal's office to tell him who I just spoken with and the, the, the performance that they gave. And it really was a performance. Um, it, I was just so, I was bursting with pride. <laughs> it, it, it turned out better than I could have dreamed. Great. And great. Ed, you did a great, great job too. Yes, yes you hey, did. Um, Nikki, I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm on board with whatever platform that, you know, the you with the admin team are comfortable with. But just in the meantime, because I have a feeling there's probably a few people that tend to tune into these work sessions. If there's somebody that's interested in sending in a, don a donation before we launch the platform, can they just reach out directly to you or is it OK to reach out to us and we'll just contact you? They, they so they if they reach out to us, direct them to our website because Ed set up a page on the district website um, that allows for anyone to provide a donation like right now yeah great thank you well, Just didn't I, miss did, that I, opportunity. Didn't, I didn't but chris chris's team did okay chris okay chris let's give credit where credit is due yeah. but still thank you ed and chris so we do have a way to to collect donations right now and that would be wonderful if, if people would like to start donating now instead of you know waiting for us to start the campaign up especially because um this scholarship is going to provide additional funds um for last year's recipients and then also funds for this year's recipients as well speaking of which ed do you do you know if if the the ladies know that they're going to get additional scholarship funds uh, for their sophomore year or their second year. Yeah, they're aware of that. Okay, great. So, so yes, absolutely. All right. Um, thanks uh, to the team for pulling that together and yeah, Nikki and um, admin team will, uh, We'll follow your lead and we'll start promoting this um, soon uh, beyond 
as Maria acknowledged, you can make a donation right now on the district website. So, um, all right, with that, we'll uh, leave our study item section and go into action items. Um, uh, do I have a motion on spring athletics? Maria, would you like to make that motion? I move to approve spring athletics as presented. I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Um, uh, mo motion on the warrant list. I'll move to approve the warrant list as submitted. Second. Thank you, Wes. Thank you, Brandy. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. And do I have a motion to go into executive session? I move to enter executive session in accordance with section 610.021, subsections 3, 9, and 13, and section 610.022 of the revised statutes of Missouri on March 4th, 2021 for the following specific reasons, personnel matters. Thank you, Nikki. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ralph. All those in favor say aye. Hi. 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 All right. Uh, Board, I am noticing that there is no exact session link in the designated place. Give me about 45 seconds and it will be there. Great. Thank you. See you guys. See you in there. Bye. Alrighty.